welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the FB207. It's the Tier 8 British SPG. It's located on the Westbourne of Stud Yankee and it's under the command of Dealer. Now, last time we saw him, it was in an M53, M55, and we do still have another video coming up for him in those vehicles. But let's see how he gets on in the Tier 8 British. Game on. Well, if he's got the top gun, he's got the 6-inch, which is a 152.4 millimeters. Yes, there it is. 650 Alpha, 38 millimeter pen, 7.6 meters burst radius. But the good thing is it actually has fairly fast reload compared to some of the other RTs. 28.76 seconds is the book reload. He's got 25.32. Okay. Deciding which side he's going to attack. Looks like the cops is going to be getting a huge amount of tension um, because we've got a large number of tanks headed that way. Ever since they've made the changes in the maps, it's made it much more um, uh, to the north or to the south with few going to the middle. It is an encounter game, though, which is all about the center of the map. And he's just trying to line a shot up there. Decided not to shoot at the uh, G saw. It's probably waiting for a more definite shot. Certainly has plenty of ammo to play with, though, because you do get 48 rounds to uh, to fire. There's a lot of action going on in the south, and all of a sudden now loads of enemy tanks turn up in the north as well. So we're going for a T-54, which is a tier 9. It's a tier 9 game with tier 8 tanks in it. Okay, line up the shot. Okay, now he's decided he's tracking these tanks, you see. that's It doesn't tend to work very well when you keep tracking it because you're constantly adjusting your aim instead of actually dialing your aim in so it's really, really accurate and then waiting for the enemy just to drive through the aim point and then obviously take a direct hit. Well, there's certainly some action going on in the center of the map near the cap area. It's a lot more open than it was before in terms of getting shells into the center, and I think he can hit that A phase one, rounds out. Yep, got a direct hit on that one, 247. And he's picking up some stun assists as well. There's still a load of confrontation going up in the cops at the north. Seeing as it's an encounter game, it does take twice as long to cap out. So it's not a worry that they're, they are capping. And it's more than likely there'll be a few resets. Well, we just saw one of the enemy tanks go down. I think that was the T-54. We're looking at Shrek now. Rounds out. Direct hit. Oh, we definitely got that one. So at least that's taken out, or it's um, not taken them out, but it's certainly badly damaged one of their support tanks. There's a Scorpion in there somewhere as well. Now, the further south he actually goes, the more likely he's going to be able to shoot at uh, the cap area. Of course, it opens more area up. Oh, isn't that nice? We've got a Carnarvon sitting behind a, a ground mound of gravel. Rounds out. Direct hit right on his front. It was a frontal plate hit. Only got 162 hit points, but he is getting stun assist as well. Notice how that Carnarvon's turret is actually bouncing a lot of rounds. He just decided to pull back rather than risk it. Probably not a good idea to shoot when you know that... Um, the roof is halfway through your uh, rescue, but he's going to have a go anyway. And I'd say that more than likely stunned that Carnarvon. The Fosh is behind one of those buildings. There he is. Not in the cap area, though. Oh, he's trying to push in. He's trying to use that wreck for cover as well. Rounds out. Direct hit right in the front quarter, 159. Loads of stun assist off that one. Of course, we know stun assist actually does help you to get an ace tanker. 
and the enemy's still trying to seize the cap area, or the corpse area, I should say, right in the north. There's our tanks up there, even though we're two tanks up on the enemy, and they are losing now in the south. They're being pushed back. And Dealer's decided that he wants to get closer to the action down there, which is actually quite uh, a good thought, because if he does follow where the his teammates are strong, he might be able to actually get shots on the enemy um, from angles that they didn't uh, expect. Okay, Leopard Prototype, very thin armor. And the Pantera together, both together, rounds out. Well, it fell short. It probably would have been easier to aim ahead of where they were moving back, but he fired as quickly as he could because it's a bit of a snap. He knew that they were only going to be together for a brief moment. But it's very hard to resist shooting at an enemy tanks when they group together like that because obviously you think you're going to get two hits with one shot. Okay, there's that leopard prototype. He just took a massive hit from one of our guys. I think that may have been the Borsig. Oh, that's a direct hit as well. 328 and he goes down. He was taken out by the K91PT, the tank destroyer. So we picked up some more stun assist. Okay, T54s now. And he, yeah, he just got a hit onto one of our guys. Now let's see what we can do. We're loaded. Now, you see where those tank tracks are? Aim ahead of the tank tracks in the line. And he's moving backwards and forwards on those tank tracks. So he pulls back, rounds out, looks perfect. Direct hit. That's exactly how you do it. You use little visual cues like that to tell you exactly where their tank's going to be a moment or so later. And he got a direct hit on the T-54 because he was predictable. So, dealer's on the move again. Now, I think we're having a bit of trouble trying to get into the enemy's rear because they've got a G-Saw, a T-54 and a T-95 around the corner near their spawn area. But the G-Saw is now confronting our guys. There he is. Put a round into him. You can see where he's uh, destroying stuff. Oh, that one went long. I think he was annoyed with himself on that one. But the G-Saw does go down. Only problem was we lost the Camp Panzer Dry as well. There's the C-54. T-95 must be just behind him. Oh, he's taking a pasting. He decided not to shoot just in case he'd moved away. It's going to get a bit closer. Now, this RT is actually based on the A45 Conqueror, not the um, uh, Centurion. So it's a heavy tank RT, surprisingly, even though it's only tier 8 based on a heavy tank, never actually got put into production. It was going to have a 105mm, 140mm or 152mm gun, and uh, the 5.5 is the stock gun. T-54. Again, I wonder, is he going to make the same mistake again? Is he going to move forward through his own tracks and then back up using his tracks? Well, we've got two there. And the Pantera's moving back and he fires at the T-54 instead. But he actually stuns both of them, which could be useful. Yes, he's picking up stun assist, so he's working. Just a couple more hits, please. That Pantera is not happy with what's going on. He knows that there are tanks sitting to the south of him in the cap area and they're capable of pointing towards him. Now, he was working out if the T-54 was going to be pulling back. He correctly worked that one out and he got another one. This time it's only a splash though, but it was worthwhile. The T-54 seemed very hesitant for a moment. Oh, 
our attack in the south has actually kind of dried up because we've got a T-34 too down there. But um, the T-54 and the Shrek are still around. Rounds out. Right next door to the Pantera. Another 184 of actual damage. And the T-54 just killed our T-54. Okay, the enemy's trying to interrupt the cap. They're trying to get a reset. Okay. Could definitely do this one. The T-95's come to the cap area. And our Kunzpanzer's left the cap. Now he's trying to get the kill on the Bosch. He's gone behind him. Oh, he's been set alight. And yeah. Didn't work out so well. But there's the kill shot on the Bosch. Yes, as Dealer says, he really shouldn't have done that, but then it's best, probably best not to say that in uh, in chat because otherwise it will antagonize your teammates. Yeah, he, he kind of uh, felt the need to go behind and try and take out the Bosch, but it didn't work out so well because of that T-95 being there. So the enemy is now in the cap area again. Now this might be a little too far forward because the enemy T-95 might spot him. He's very, very close. Very risky because of course the T-95 would then need one shot to take him out. And that Shrek is very, very close indeed. But now we've got nobody in the south, south of our um, T-103 and Cobra. And yes, they, those T-54 is very close. Now, they did lose the Shrek. That's good news. But now we've got that T-34. Now, he's working out. Can he get a shot in there? No, the buildings are in the way. He'd have to fire through the gap. So he's decided he's going to drive in. There's the T-95. Now, he can hit that guy right up the rear. Get the fuel tanks. Rounds out. Gets a direct hit. But I don't think it was the T-95 that he hit there. I think it might have been one of the others. I think both of them... Uh... Oh, he's only got one in the cap, so it's only the T-95. And now there's only two left in the enemy team. They're RT and they're T-95. So yes, he did hit the T-95. Nobody's found the enemy RT yet. Enemy RT is an M40, M43, and actually, supposedly, he's quite a good player. Okay, T95 making himself vulnerable. Takes a direct hit on the side. 61. He's stunned. We could be looking at some more. Yep, some more stun assist. K91's delighting in putting rounds into the guy. Yes! And that means there's only one enemy left. It's now the RT. Well, with two minutes to go, we should be able to find them. Massive amount of stun assist and they're by dealer. 2,697 so far. And he still might get damage on that M40, M43. Now he's looking across the railway line right into the corner. But the M40, M43 is a little further south. Cobra found him. Okay, we're dialing in as quickly as we can, but it's too late because the K91 PT takes the honors. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was an ace tanker game for Dealer in the FB207. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got nine, and he got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team, including the fact that he actually got a kill on the Fosh. His win eight in the game, 3,106, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, didn't get the highest damage in the game. That actually went to the Fosh on the enemy team. Got a high caliber and 5,573 hit points. Second highest damage went to the K91PT, who also got the last kill of the game with 3,865, and he picked up a tank sniper. And the third highest damage in the game went to the Cobra on the team with 3,370 hit points of damage. We can see that Dealer managed to get 2,210. He was beaten by 
two members of the enemy team and two members of his own team and that means he's in fifth place on damage when it came to kills though it's the k91pt shares it with the cobra and on the enemy team with their t95 and then we've got two kills for the t103 the borsig the t34 2 and on the enemy team their fosh their m40 m43 and their t54 when it came to uh dealer he's only got the one kill but it was the the highest scoring player on the enemy team when it came to base XP, it's Dealer. Yes, he got so much stun assist off that one. That's why he got a high one. 1,102 for Dealer. 1,056 went to the Cobra and 1,012 went to the K91PT. Only three players managed to get over 1,000 base, but the Conqueror was fairly close behind with 962. Dealer fired 16 rounds, so he got a decent amount of ammunition fired to get him the, uh, uh, the stun that he needed to get that stun assist. Eight direct hits on the enemy, zero penetrations though, 16 splash. I guess a 152mm caliber at tier 9 is fairly difficult to pen, unless, of course, you've got a very, very weakly armored tank destroyer, such as a, a Waffentrager or a Borsig, which are slightly easier to pen. 2,210 hit points of damage, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damaged 80 the enemy, killed one. Did 2,697 hit points of stun assist, or 15 stuns, and that's how he managed to get the uh, ace tanker. He also got 55 defense points when he kept re resetting the cap when he was firing into it. So he was getting closer and closer to getting a defender medal. On a premium count, he actually earned a profit on this one, 53,490 credits. Uh, he didn't have to resupply ammunition or consumables or repairs. So, yes, that's another way of actually boosting up your scores. If you want to make your credits look better, uh, is to actually buy plenty of the material up ahead so that um, uh, when it comes to uh, resupplying the vehicle, you don't actually have to pay anything. He also got 3,306 experience points as well. So a good battle there from Dealer in the FP207. Not the easiest RT to play because it's fairly slow. Only got 29 kilometers an hour maximum speed, but it does uh, fire fairly quickly or fairly rapidly. Um, it's slightly, well, it's it's on the par with the 155 millimeter RTs in many, many ways. Uh, but uh, yes, it does punch those rounds out. And one of course, the biggest benefits is that it's got very wide arc, 44 degrees of um, arc, 22 degrees either side of the center line, down to the way the gun was mounted in the casement. But the other best thing is, of course, that it's uh, got vents, which means that you can uh, improve your sc crew skills to actually uh, improve their accuracy and reload time. Hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.